Christine, Stitch All the Things. I'm here with Floss Tube video number four. And I want to say thank you so much to everyone who's watched my videos or left a comment. I have no idea why you came back. It's just me, but I appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, thank you for watching. Um, and for those of you who've subscribed, thank you for that too. I this community is just amazing and I'm I'm having so much fun interacting with so many people people I hadn't really interacted with before because most of my um, stitchy interactions been on Instagram so it's fun like putting your names and faces with the Instagram accounts I've been following um, I'm having a blast and um, thank you so much for putting up with me I'm, I'm a bit of a goof we all know this um, at least if you watch my other videos, you know I'm a goofball and chatty. Um, I don't have a lot of time today, but I have a lot to talk about, to talk about. So this video may be done in a couple parts. My daughter is 16, and she's still on her, uh, learner's permit. She decided to focus on, um, a college night course to get a certified nursing assistant certificate, and she did that. And it took a lot of time and energy. And so we told her, don't worry about your driving. We'll get it done after. Um, and now she started driving. But, you know, there's so many things that you have to think about and decisions you have to make in a split second. And sometimes five decisions in one split second that you have to make when you're out there driving. And our town is notorious for um, horrific stop signs. Four-way stops, three-way stops. Um, we've got... Um, our town is made up of some locals, a lot of locals, snowbirds during the winter coming from all sorts of northern states and other states. And in the summer, it's, um, we call the, I call them waterfowl. Snowbirds in the winter, waterfowl in the summer, because we're a lakeside community. And a lot of the waterfowl are from California. So Californians drive fast, and a lot of them are from L.A., and they know how to drive. People complain about Californians driving too fast and stuff, but I will tell you, those people know how to drive. They're fast, but they know how to do their lane changes and all of that stuff. Um, but when you mix the two, and there's a few months where everybody mixes um, snowbirds in the winter, four-way stops just become a nightmare. Um, and in some states, people won't enter the intersections at stop signs until cars have gone through. Not in Arizona. People, if you're in Arizona and there's a car halfway through, you better be rolling, ready to go as soon as they're gone because somebody's going to think you're not going to take your turn. They'll take it for you. And so it gets a little overwhelming for my daughter and her brain is not functioning as quickly as it needs to. And so driver's training has been stressful for her um, because we're the kid, you know, when you're driver's training with your kids, they're in real life situations. And so you have that fast to, to yell or stop or whatever. And sometimes her brain doesn't hear that. She's in this tunnel vision place. Anyway, so we're trying to practice some after school driving. If there's no one on the road, she is a perfect driver. She does everything perfect. But if there's someone else on the road, we have some problems. And so after school, in about 30 minutes, I've got to get her. So um, I'm going to start this video, and uh, my phone stops videos anyway around 30 minutes. So I'll get as much done as I can and then finish later. So I may be in different clothes in the second half if it's tomorrow or or a lot more frazzled than probably having a glass of wine or, I don't know, a margarita in the last half of the video after driving around with Callie. Callie, I know you watch my videos. I love you so much. You're doing so good. We just have to practice. We just have to keep practicing. Don't get discouraged. Not being mean or critical of you. I love you. And now we're at the boring part, Callie, so just go on. You don't have to watch anymore. She likes to watch the beginning of my videos because she says I'm kind of funny. She just watches me and comes out and she's like, Mom, just please stop. Don't ever do that again. Okay, anyway, I have news. I am so excited to tell you guys this. Like, cloud nine. Okay, 
Y'all know, because I've been whining about it in every video, that I can't watch a lot of YouTube or anything because of data issues. And we used about four to six gigabytes a day, and we had like, I think, 200 or 250 gigabytes to get through the whole month. Some days we'd end up with 10 or 12 if there were updates on our computers, whatnot. This past month, we did really good. We were right in under the thing, and I was really um, being careful with my videos. By the way, Andrea Strom, Strom, I'm sorry if I butchered your name there. Thank you. She suggested if I want to watch more videos, turn my resolution down. <laughs> she was really nice. She's like, turn it down to 360. Um, and, and 360 was high for me. But I did turn it down to 144. And I watched so many videos, um, not this weekend, but the one before, so many, hours and hours. Now, y'all were blurry as could be, but I was stitching anyway, and so if you were to show something like, look at this sampler or whatever, or here's my haul, I would look over and it'd be blurry and kind of muddy looking, whatever, and so I wasn't enabled very much, so that was a good thing, but then, then, the end of last month, my husband checks the last day. We're in great shape. We got like 30 gigabytes left for the month. He's like, watch YouTube, whatever. The next day he checks and I go, holy, you know what? And I'm like, what? What happened? He's like, I got a $15 data charge. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? And he said, we went over and he pulls up the thing. Now, my husband has body math like me. He doesn't use it as often as I do. But let's just say he was rather colorful with his response when he saw the data graph from Suddenlink. Shows that we've got like the usual four to six, some days 10, some days 12, not very many. And the very last day of the month, 84 gigabytes. 84. That's not even possible. Even if every single one of us watched YouTube on the highest definition for 24 hours, we wouldn't have done that. So he calls, and and it turns out he posted on a local Facebook group, and there were a bunch of people that had that same spike happen. And um, I'm, I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist in that. I think Suddenlink spiked everybody's data so that if you weren't on Unlimited, you were highly encouraged to do so. So anyway, he gets on the phone with them. The guy's like, yeah, I can see that's really abnormal for you. And my husband's like, you know what? Just put it on unlimited. I don't ever want to have to worry about this again. And I'm looking at him like, I'm so sorry. Because I know I'm doing these videos. I'm watching. I'm trying to be really careful. And he's like, listen, our, st our stuff has changed. I'm not going to pay for unlimited if we're not going to use that much data. But if you're going to do videos and watch all this YouTube stuff or floss tube, go for it. And I'm like, oh. Yes. So yeah, y'all, I've been watching y'all on the highest resolution and I'm seeing all your pretty stuff and I'm buying it too. Yeah. Anyway, I have so much catching up to do. I binge watched Elena B. Oh, I have the biggest woman crush on her right now. The biggest. Like if I could have a floss tube girlfriend, she'd be my girlfriend. Like, I'm stalking that girl. I'm, I'm trying not to, but she messaged me on Instagram, and I was so excited. I had no one to text message to say, Elena B. messaged me, so I did it to her. That's how stupid I am. I'm like, oh my gosh, Elena B. texted me. I have to tell you. It's you, but I didn't say it quite like that. But anyway, I love her. Love her so much. Like, I watch her video, and I'm walking around smiling. All day after because she just has such enthusiasm and she's so excited and she brings these international charts into my life that I'm like holy crap I, I would never have known without her and her kitchen with the oranges I'm telling you the first time I saw those oranges on her ceiling I was I was transported back to that Disney California ride that um, soaring over California where they go over the orange orchards and you have this orange scent I imagine that's what her kitchen smells like but then she's got the bakery thing, so yeah, that makes sense. Like a, that cream bouquet smell, um, citrusy smell. Oh, anyway, I just absolutely love her. So anyway, all that to say that I'm really trying to catch up on videos. And um, so I put your videos on. Right now I'm going through Olivia. Um, her 
channel and trying to get caught up on all her videos. But I'm getting there. Like I got Pam and Steph videos. I get to watch all of their videos. Their long, long videos on like the highest resolution. I cannot wait. Um, and anyway, speaking of, I wanted to say thank you to so many of you who shouted out uh, my channel. Uh, I know I miss so many because I'm really behind on videos. I'm trying to catch up, but I'm behind. Um, but I know um, that Dark Side Stitcher, uh, Jen, she shouted me out. And if, if you haven't watched her first floss tube, oh my gosh, she did this Lizzie Borden piece. She actually put a hatchet with it. And like painted it with nail polish and the whole piece so it looks like blood spatters. It's amazing. That girl, Jen, I love you. You know. Oh, you are so talented. But anyway, also Andrea St Stitches in Colorado. She shouted me out. I had no idea. I'm just watching her video. I'm like, okay, I'm start catching up. I might have to start at the most recent because I'm overwhelmed otherwise, you guys. I, I, I can't start at the beginning. I have so many. So I'm just sitting there listening and stitching. She mentioned me, my name. Oh, I was blown away. Thank you. Everybody who mentioned me, I was just listening to your video and then I heard my name and I'm like, holy crap, that's me. They're talking about me. I don't know why, but thank you so much. It really made my day. Heather Moore, her channel, uh, I think she's the Blessed Stitcher on Instagram. I can't remember if that's her channel name or if it's just Heather Moore. I think it's just Heather Moore. I love her. Thank you so much for the shout out and for enabling me. And I'm going to talk about that later. Um, and Lolly, Lollipop Stitches, that was just such a surprise. Um, anybody else? I, I haven't got there yet, but I know someone did recently because all of a sudden in one day I had all these likes on my channel. I'm like, who is it? Who would say that? And it, I just, I'm blown away. I don't know why, but I appreciate it. And I thank you. I, it just, guys, just make my day. Anyway, that's all my blabbering. 12 minutes in. I really have a habit of that. Dang. Okay, whips. I'm going to start with whips and finishes, um, stitchy finishes, and fully finished off things. I have some. I have many. And if you're on Instagram, you know. You know I worked my butt off. Okay, as far as the finish goes, this is, um, I can't see. This one right here, Christmas Tree Farm in Santa's Village by Country Cottage Needleworks. Absolutely love this. Um, right here, I cannot see um, the trees. I used Red Krynic instead of the called for call um, the called for red in the chart. Um, I wanted my accents in the trees to be sparkly, and so they are. Again, sorry about my camera going different colors. Quick side note, I actually bought a little handheld video camcorder from Amazon, used it, everything was washed out. And I'm like, oh, he heck no. I can't have all my fabrics, which give me such joy and happiness, looking all crappy um, and just blech. This is my happy place. So I returned that and I decided to order a new phone. I really wanted to get one of the nice Samsung flagship phones. I cannot afford that, people. I'm cheap when it comes to phones. I will find the best budget smartphone I can because I am not paying over $150 for a phone. And I do not do contracts, and I'm not paying $35 bucks a month for two years for a phone because when you add that crap up, that's expensive. I have no judgment on anybody who wants to do that. But I, I, I can't justify that, especially because I'm paying for four phones for four people. I ain't paying, like... $350 a month for phone bills. Anyway, I, I have a new phone coming. Uh, I hope it works well. I don't know if it's going to fix the color temperature thing changing, but bear with me. Sorry. Anyway, so that's my um, Christmas tree farm finish for January, and I'll be getting the next one done. I forgot which one is up next for February. Um, I'm going to be doing that in a couple weeks. So that's Christmas Tree Farm. Um, the other thing I worked on was the Doolahan and the Death Coach by The Little Stitcher. I decided to finish this. And this one is actually um, fully finished off. And I used Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitchers 
tutorial for flat folds. Um, and so I will link her tutorial below because it's amazing. This is my finish. I used some lace um, that I, I dyed in coffee because it was too white and then decided I didn't want the lace around the back and so I found this like lacy pom-pom stuff and put it behind it but I love it and I love this fabric this fabric has all sorts of different motifs on it I want to say it's like an Edgar Allan Poe fabric I have it I can't remember exactly the name people usually ask me about fabrics and so I should just find the salvage no it's a Michael Miller oh nevermore collection designed by Jillian Fullard for Michael Miller fabric fabrics and it has all sorts of great motifs on it anyway so I use that to make the 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 easel part of the flat fold love this fabric and that's my death coach and the dual hand. It was stitched on 32 count vintage country mocha linen um, that I got from 123 Stitch. And I think it's Zweigert, but I'm not positive. Um, so that was a finish and a fully finished off. And my next one, now this is actually because of Elena B and Ginger Gerald Stitcher. Okay. You know, my, my mad woman crush for Elena B. Um, she and Ginger Gerald were doing a mushroom, um, they call it hashtag excess mushroom sal um, for the mushroom stitch along. Now they all have, uh, the people doing this mushroom stitch along have beautiful charts they're stitching. And I will insert pictures of the charts here. Now, uh, I don't like mushrooms, I, I, not at all. Uh, it's actually a texture thing, it's not a flavor thing, because I'll make recipes with mushrooms where they're cooked way down. Absolutely love the flavor, the texture, like please, if I want to chew on rubber, it's not going to be a mushroom, um, or something that tastes like dirt. Mushrooms and olives are this thing for me. As a matter of fact, I have a little story. Me and my stories, I tell you. My husband and I went to... Uh, his sister and her husband invited us to dinner at one of our favorite pizza places in Salem, Paddington's. We eat there as much as we can when we're up there because we love it and we don't have anything like that here. So they invited us there for dinner and they said they were going to order the Humdinger pizza. Now I know this pizza has um, olives and mushrooms on it. And I'm thinking, okay, be a big girl. They really like this pizza and I like people to be happy. I don't want to cause waves, people pleaser. So I'm like, sure, that's fine. Now I thought my husband knew it was mushrooms and olives and he's okay with them, but he's not a huge fan, but he has no problem eating them. I'm thinking, oh, they'll just be a little sprinkling. And I think it had like pepperoni on it too, whatever. Anyway, they bring out this pizza and I swear they unloaded two cans of olives all, all over the top. And I you have a choice between fresh mushrooms or canned mushrooms. I think they chose canned mushrooms, which I would have been fine with because normally they're cut in really tiny pieces. Not this one. Quarter inch thick. Big old slices of mushrooms all over. And I'm looking at this pizza and I'm like, holy crap, girl, what have you got yourself into? But I don't want anybody to know that I don't like this. So I sit there and I eat my slices and I'm like shaking it because in my world if it falls off the pizza slice I don't I don't have to eat it so um I get through like two slices of pizza we're chatting no one is the wiser except for my husband and I'm giving him this look like don't you dare say a word because I do not want your sister to be uncomfortable just shut your mouth and he knew but he was smirking at me and he was not well pleased with the pizza either because it was a lot so a few months later he had to be up in Salem um, for some kind of sad, sad personal stuff. And he was up there with his sister and she was chatting about how well she can read me, read my expressions and emotions. And that's true in some cases. But if I don't want you to know something, you're not going to know it. You're not going to tell. And he says, well, if you can read her so well, do you know how much she hated that mushroom and all the pizza? And she just looked at him and went, oh, she's good. Yes, 
I can fool people. It's a thing. I shouldn't be that way because that's sad. That's just really lying by omission. But I don't want anybody to know about the mushrooms and olives. So anyway, mushrooms. Not a fan, but I, I'm just wanted to join in on this mushroom stitch along that Ginger Gerald and Elena B. started. So I showed you the pictures of all the people, all the pretty charts. And here's a picture of the chart I chose. Yeah. Nice classy charts. Mine. This is mine. Mushrooms grow in poop. Because they do. And there's a, used to be a mushroom farm on this corner uh, of a place up in Salem. And every time we drove by it, my husband says, that used to be the mushroom farm and it smells like poop every time you go by. It. And of course they do. And so that's sort of how I feel about mushrooms. Mushrooms grow in poop, people. And I read somewhere that you're not supposed to wash them off before you use them. You're supposed to brush them off. That's not happening at my house. Those suckers are getting scrubbed down. Anyway, here's my finish. I started it, and I finished it, and I'm a candidate. I put it in a frame already. Love this frame. Found it at Hobby Lobby. Um, now, Hobby Lobby puts their frames on sale every other week. 50% off every other week. So if you go into Hobby Lobby and it's not on sale that week, it will be the next week. Don't you pay full price. You wait. Wait a week. Anyway, it's um, it looks like red leather, but it's a vinyl. And it's got stitching. And it's perfect. I love it. I changed some of the, um, like these, where the white beads are. These were supposed to be like a red floss. And I just said, no, those have to be white. And here, I don't know if you can see these beads those were supposed to be, I think, a gold color, so I chose orangey beads. And then here, this was also supposed to be a, I think, this red color. And I didn't like it with this darker red. That's 814, I think, and 815 here, or switch, whatever. Anyway, I love this piece. This is going in my Oregon house, and I'm just keeping it in the kitchen because it makes me so happy. I don't like mushrooms, but I love this piece. And thank you, Elena and Ginger Gerald, for being okay with me and my classy mushroom chart. Okay, more finishes. More Now, these I finished before, but I FFO'd them. They're fully finished off, or whatever you want to use. This is my Ghoul Tidings to You by Plum Street Samplers. This was stitched on a 20 count cream linen. I got it at a garage sale, so I don't know who did it, but I did a pillow with piping, and I love this fabric, Witch's Brew, and this is Graveyard Dust, um, Owl Hoots, yep, plural, another Witch's Brew. Absolutely love this pillow. I stitched it, and I stitched up, hand closed the end, and I looked at it and realized there wasn't enough pillow fluff in it. So I had to rip all, all the stitching I did, stuff it again, like uh, like twice as much, and then re-sewed it. And it looks better. It's still a little wrinkly here in the piping. Not as smooth as I want, but I like that pillow. Um, the next one I did was another pillow. I jacked this one up, people. This is um, the... Mystery Halloween Town Sampler by Ships Manor, Stitch Along, and it used some of the um, neon lights from DMC. That stuff is a pain to stitch with, but look at how good this looks. I call that Slime River. Um, I use this trim, and I love it. It's almost like pom-poms, but they're not. They're just a bunch of strands of fabric wrapped over, and um, this is the fabric I use for the back. And when I was cutting it, I when I was laying it down, I got to the ends and I wanted the pom-poms to just come up to the edges but not overlap. And I screwed up, people. I'll cut too much of those pom-poms off. So every single one of my corners, that one would have been okay. If all the rest had turned out like that, I liked it. But look at that. Big old empty spots. So I went to Hobby Lobby for buttons couldn't find any bat buttons or anything I liked. And then I walked by in the, um, where people go for the jewelry making stuff, where you should go if you want to make your own needle minders. And I saw these tassels and I thought, well, heck, I can make my own tassels. So I came home and I made tassels out of DMC. I had jewelry findings 
and I actually bought wire to wrap, but the wire was too big and gave me lots of problems. So I just tied off, um, I took floss, wrapped it around my fingers, like right here, um, cut the bottom, and then put it through the finding, and then wrapped floss right there to tie it off, and then just fluffed them out. So this turned out, oops, way better than I expected. Now, I have another, actually, never mind, I'll get to that in a second. I'm at 25 minutes. I'm going to have to hurry up and finish this because my camera is not going to like me. This is another flat fold that I did. This fabric. Ghostly Encounters. Stitched on 32 count lit ale. By Picture This Plus in linen. 32 count linen. Um, so that's another one. Love that. I finally framed this one. This one's been done for a long time. I Love You So Very Much by Stitch Rovia. I used um, a combination of Vonna Pfeiffer's technique and Stitcherista's technique with the stitchery tape. I sprayed the foam core um, with the Aline's tacky glue, put the batting on it, wrapped this around and used Danielle's stitchery tape to adhere that down. Now the last um, finish I'm going to have, I'm actually um, going to make a tutorial. You guys probably won't need it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to make a pillow out of this one, the Halloween Town. And I have some, I don't know if I left it here, yeah, some trim. This is like the green trim on this pillow. Uh, I'm going to use this and just take a video of me sewing that pillow up and see. Um, I'm going to do that tomorrow and load it. And if you guys want to sew a pillow, you can see how I do it. Super easy. Um, and if you already know how to sew a pillow, don't judge me if I don't do it right. Um, I'm going to stop the video here because I see I'm at about 26 minutes. It's almost time to go get my daughter. And um, for you, that will be a transition into my haul and enabling from some of you amazing people. Um, so I'm going to pause now. Back from driver's training. Kelly did pretty well today. We had a few incidents, but every day is different and that's what we told her but she showed some improvement today and she's really happy with that and so are we so super proud of her for trying so hard anyway uh filled up my soda there's no rum in it i'd love some but not because Callie's driving just i'd love some rum it's what almost four it's five o'clock somewhere people Um, and I have my snack, so we're set to go. And I left off on haul. Oh my gosh, I love how Olivia B. does her Oprah haul. I, I've been watching her videos, just love her. And she's enabled me. Oh, I actually have a huge list. I've been good. I watch her stuff and I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot. That was on my wish list, so I want that. But it's out of print now. Damn it, what do I do? And I'm like, don't do not do anything. Just watch Stash Unload, see if it comes up there or eBay or something. Um, but I got, I got a little bit of stuff. Thank you, Olivia, if you watch this. Anyway, I just love how she says haul. Um, the first thing I got today, which I am super excited. This just came in the mail today. I got my uh, shipping notification on Friday night. I cut out the address. I don't know if you could see right there. European Cross Stitch Company. I got my Chatelaine Poison Garden Kit. It's been really hard, but I have not opened this package. I am going to do a video uh, talking about this. Uh, I'm sure you've seen a bazillion people open their Chatelaine kit, but um, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. Or maybe even do it after I finish this if I have time before dinner. Do another video. So I'll be in the same shirt. I love this shirt. Anyway, I'll be in the same shirt for that video. But um, I'm super excited about this. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about um, European Cross Stitch. And how amazing Cindy Ward was. And how she worked with me to get this. Do you hear those beads? Oh, I want to open it so bad. Okay, just know. Walk away I, right I now. had to record the second part of my video over again because um, my camera, the video and the audio got out of sync and I can't stand watching that. Um, and it was pretty bad. So um, today is actually the next day. I recorded the first half of the video on Monday, February 
5th. Today is Tuesday, February 6th. I put the same, once I realized what happened when I was editing everything together, I ran in, put the same shirt and jewelry on, and came out here to record this just for the sake of continuity because it would have been really weird to record half the video in one outfit and switch it up and it's just really annoying but life happens so coffee this morning my navy mug for my son I'm so proud of him going into the navy I'm not gonna get sidetracked into conversation though life stuff at the moment because we were in the middle of haul and I had just finished showing you the Chatelaine and I'm really glad that the audio video went out of sync after that because um, after I had recorded yesterday's video, I finished, I recorded opening that envelope for the Chatelaine. So that whole envelope, everything has been opened and I was relieved I didn't have to try to cobble it all back together for this second half. Um, anyway, um, the other piece of haul I got... Um, trying to go back in my mind where I was. Um, I received my Under the Sea Fabrics of the Month Club for January. This is called Winter Garden. It's a beautiful peachy pink and like a periwinkle, a real almost a light purpley blue. Gorgeous colors. The camera of course does not pick up how amazing this is. It's a 32 count Jobelin. Um, I really like stitching on the Jobelin um, uneven weaves. Uh, but I like how linens dye better. So sometimes it's a struggle me for for me for the month. Like, do I want to get that in in the Jobelin because they they tend to dye much lighter or the linen. Anyway, uh, so that was Jan January's fabric of the month. The other thing I bought was um, courtesy of Stitcherista's video uh, where she showed. Um, her finish with me on Deck the Halls. Um, she had ordered a frame from American Frame Company, and then as she was putting it together, she was using stitchery tape. So I bought some stitchery tape from 123 Stitch was the cheapest place. I looked on Amazon first, of course, and um, it was ridiculously priced for like 30 yards, and 123 Stitch had it for 15 and change, plus shipping for 60 yards of tape. And I think it's a one and a half inch tape. Uh, one and a, whatever, yeah. Anyway, um, I love this stuff. I actually used it to finish um, the I Love You So Very Much and the mushroom one. And uh, I loved Danielle's tutorial. I'm going to link her tutorial below for how she did this because this is great stuff. If you don't want to lace. Uh, and I didn't want to lace. I, I didn't have time for that. But... There was no way I could get an order from 123 Stitch in just tape. That would be so sad to get that envelope and just have tape in it. Now there had been a chart I had I saw um X Stitch23 on Instagram. She posted this chart. She was gonna start stitching it back in I wanna say November, maybe even September of 2017. And I fell in love with it right away. I didn't even realize it has a bunch of ble um, beads and stuff and treasure. I didn't even know that when I saw the chart. I just loved, I just loved the pattern. It is um, Flowers of the Holy Night by Glendon Place. And sorry for the glare of the plastic. I should have taken that out first. I just love this whole thing. The reds and pinks and the greens. Um... Uh, just I love poinsettias and um, and now I'm taking it out of the bag uh, but I held off on buying this chart because um, all of this is stitched in dinky dyes silks and I, I couldn't afford it and it's 18 skeins you need to do this chart so I went back and forth on should I do it in DMC or dinky dyes and I decided I love the look of this and, and the subtle variegation I'm going with the silks so I decided to wait to kit it up because I'm going to start my Chatelaine soon. I didn't need to kit this up right away. And um, there was someone in the Chatelaine support group on Facebook posted that Margaret of um, the, I forgot her shop name, the little, little stitch shop. That doesn't matter. On eBay, she is Michigan doctor. 
and she sells silks and over dyed cottons for really good prices. Someone posted she's retiring, she's 80, and she's not going to sell this anymore. And that she was, if you emailed her to order, because a lot of people order from her that way, um, she's getting rid of her inventory at 25% off. And so I knew I needed, if I was going to kit this up with dinky dyes, I needed to buy them now. So I sent her an email. I'd never ordered from her before because I was I was waiting for a reason to spend a chunk of money and, and kit this up. And when I found out she was retiring and I wasn't going to get these at reasonable prices, I emailed her, fingers crossed that she would, uh, because I wasn't a previous customer, that she would be okay with doing this. And sure enough, she emailed me back like a day later and said, I have all of those flosses in stock. I sent you an invoice. Now, her dinky dies were $350 normally and 25% off that plus shipping, which was like $3, whatever. Anyway, I divided the total amount by 18 skeins and it turned out to be $2.89 a skein for dinky dye silks. I'm I'm so glad I did that right now. I mean, obviously it's a bad month to, to buy 18 skeins of dinky dye silks and put a payment on my Chatelaine like I did, but I, I would spend a fortune otherwise. I mean, I think I priced it, if I bought it from 123 Stitch at regular prices, it would have been like 75 or $80, and I saved like 30 bucks. So, um, I haven't gotten the fabric for this. It's just an antique white Jobelin, and I'll probably do that uh, because I really want the flowers and the leaves to pop off a neutral background and the beads to shine too. And then I need to order the beads, and um, uh, 123 Stitch has those as well. I'll probably wait till another month or two because I'm not going to stitch this right away because of the Chatelaine. But um, I have those on my list to finish kitting this up now that I know the silks are coming. And that's what you get when you order stitchery tape from 123 Stitch and you just can't bear the thought to open one of those envelopes and not have a chart or some flosses in it. Okay, this next one was um, enabled by Olivia B. Um, she did a video where she did a, a, a flip through. My brain, sometimes I just don't have the words. They're not there. Uh, she did a flip through of this book. Now I've had this booklet, um, Home for the Holidays by Blackbird Designs, on my 123 stitch wish list for for probably a year. And the reason why is I saw someone stitch up the Tis the Season chart, this chart, and I love this. I absolutely love this chart. I'm trying to get it so you could see better. There's a little bit of charting down here below, and I didn't, I don't want to show that. But that bird, I love this bird. Um, I, I wanted it for this, but just wasn't prepared to plop down 25 bucks for the booklet until I saw Olivia B's um, video, and I'm going to link her video because she does a walkthrough of this, and you can watch hers for the walkthrough, flip through, walkthrough, let's walk through the book. Um, she showed this chart, um, what, Christmas Garden Sampler, and I was sold. All She showed like this much, and I was like, yep, that's mine. I got to get that book anyway, right I now. Anyway, I paused right the away. video, went online, and ordered it immediately. Um, yeah, I'm so glad I did. There's other charts in here, but um, because uh, Olivia B. already did the flip through, I'm not going to do another one. I'll link her video, and you can watch hers for the flip through. Um, the next chart I got is a PDF chart, and this one was thanks to Elena B. Um, she's working on this for her honey, All Souls Dear Landon, and I don't know if you could tell, but these are all skulls. And when I saw this, I was like, oh, buy it now. I paused her video, too, and went and got this off of Etsy. This is um, from Cultified Design, Ben Drew on Etsy. And this chart reminds me of um, a combination of a couple Prairie Moon charts. Uh, one is Skull Garden, which I'm never going to be able to find or get unless I want to pay a fortune and rob somebody of their chart, probably. And um, Thine is the Trick in the Tree and... The other chart, no, mine is the trick and the treat. I just, this reminds me of that so much. And, um, 
yeah, I had to get this. And I don't know when I'm going to stitch it, but I'm going to take out the alphabet because I don't need the alphabet. And the alphabet is also interspersed all throughout. And so what I'm going to do instead of stitching, I may keep the alphabet throughout, but I was actually thinking of stitching my name. Like just writing, you know, using Christine Slaughter and filling up the spaces with my name. Does that seem kind of arrogant maybe? Egotistical? I don't know. That was my idea. Probably a little bit. It's okay. You can answer below and say, yeah, that's way too much. Don't put your whole name in there. But, uh, <laughs> it sounds so bad, but I, that was my thought. Um, anyway, I, I don't know. When I start stitching that, you guys will know. I have, um, quite a few shades of, uh, Carrie's Creation Silk Most Deadly Nightshade, and I may stitch that with that floss because I love it. And there was another chart I got. I put everything away because I was done with the video and um, I thought I got everything out but I, I didn't. I forgot one other chart um, that was on Etsy. Here it is. Now I follow Stone Street Stitchworks. I really like their charts um, and she had started to stitch up uh, a chart and the minute I saw it, just part of it, I was I was in love. And I was like, I cannot, I just saw the border. Look at this, I'm going to show it to you now. The border and the birds. It's called Librarian's House. As soon as she was done stitching this, um, she had made comments, I haven't charted it yet, I'm just getting it stitched. I started stalking her store to look for when she was going to list it. Because I wanted this chart Here's the so funny bad. thing. And I, this cracks me up. I said in my first video that I didn't like sheep and I don't like them at all. And I was kind of just, ugh, about sheep. The thing is, is in real life, I actually really like sheep. I think they're cute. We used to, when I go to my grandparents' ranch, we used to go buy a little um, uh, pasture with a bunch of sheep in them. I absolutely loved them. I just don't like them in cross stitch. But the funny thing is, I love birds and blackbirds in cross stitch. I don't know why, but if there's blackbirds in them, I want to stitch it. In real life, I do not like them at all. They scare the crap out of me. Like, my husband and I um, stopped overnight at a casino in some place. I want to say Fallon, Nevada. And... I think that was it. It's not up and running now. It just middle of nowhere felt like and we're in the back lot where all the truckers come in and they stay overnight. And there were these three big crows. I mean, these things were huge. And they just stayed right around the front of our motorhome. And if we had any activity, I swear those birds watched us. I think those are like evil birds of the night. They scare the crap out of me. But in charts, I love to stitch them. How weird is that? I'm so weird. I don't like to stitch sheep. I love sheep. Uh, I love to stitch birds. I don't like blackbirds. Whatever. Anyway, love this chart. This was another PDF purchase that I made. Um, another enabling thing that I did. Now, in like all pre all of my previous videos, I said this year I'm not doing stitch alongs. Um, I'm focused on finishes. I'm not buying anything new. I'm not starting anything new. Started that. I watched Heather Moore's video. Thank you for the shout out, Heather. And she start. She showed an image of a stitch along she's doing. I'm going to insert a picture of that here. Prickly but cute. How cute is that? I. The thing is, is. I don't really like cactuses, I don't like mushrooms, stitch to mushroom chart, don't like birds, love birds in charts, so weird. Anyway, I don't really like cactus charts, but I'm always on the lookout for a chart that represents Arizona. I live in Arizona, I should have an Arizona chart. So every time I see a cactus chart or something about Arizona, it has a cactus and it's just, blech, I don't like it. But when I saw that one, I absolutely needed to stitch it. And so I went and I ordered all the charts that have been released so far. Now the funny thing is, is I told you in the, if you watch the cross stitch journal thing, that you need to make it your own. If you need to adjust pages or whatever, do that. And I said for the stitch along 
tracker page. I only put 12 because I assumed there would only be 12 releases for the stitch long. This one has 15. So I had to do what I told you to do. I had to adjust it. I had to make the top one bigger and thankfully I had room on the page to put just bump the other ones down. So no, you can do that. You can adjust it. So I typed in all the release dates there and I actually, despite saying I'm not going to put the Santa's village chart here, I put it here anyway. And I typed some and hand wrote half and that's how random I am. Um, but anyway, you know, I really need to start saying stuff like I'm never ever going to win the lottery because every time I say in these videos I'm not going to do something I end up doing it so I'm not going to win the lottery ever maybe next week I can tell you I won the lottery who knows um anyway so I I decided to use a fabric and I already loaded it up on my roller frame actually it's backwards because I'm going to start in this bottom corner <sighs> I'm holding it up so high in this corner to start the frame and go around and um, this fabric is a real neutral it's called sagebrush from under the sea fabrics it's a 32 count Jobelin and um, it's really a like a grayish green um, and the colors of the stitch along kind of pop a bit on it so I was glad about that um, so yeah bought a stitch along and not only that uh, I mentioned how many needle minders I had in my cross stitch video and that I my husband didn't even want me to have like a needle minder page he figures one needle minder per person is enough that man has no clue but anyway I I really didn't need to buy anymore and um, uh, for some reason I ended up on a needle minder kick this last month. Not outrageous, but I did get some. I was in Gina Unique Boutique's Facebook group. I'll link her group below. And I saw these two needle minders and I had to get them. This redhead with the Santa hat, I love her. She's She's been on my um, Santa's Village ever since I got her, her hat and the ball's all glittery. I just, if it's a redhead, I just love it. I need to get my hair redone. The roots are terrible. It's all faded and blech. Um, But I got this witch too because I love her. I love her little spider eye. I don't know that I can focus real well. Her hat holding the pumpkin and her little stockings. I just love those. So I got these from Gina's Unique Boutique. And then a couple days later, I saw Heather Moore's um, Prickly But Cute Stitch Along. So I went back to Etsy to see if I could find a cactus needle minder because I didn't have one and I got this one from Gina's Unique Boutique as well just love that cactus the little flower and it's light pink I'm not a huge pink fan but um, uh, I it matches the stitch along and the colors in it so I got that and then not long after that, a needle minder I have been looking for for probably a year and a half and could never really find um, Stitchy Box. I can't remember her name. Is it Liz? Um, anyway, she was at a, a, like a needle arts show convention. I forgot what it's called. And she found like the last 14 of these Foo Bar needle minders from Accoutrement Design. Is that how you say that? I don't know. Um, I just love these. But what I love more is on the back of this card. People will ask randomly, like in Stitch Mania, why do you have to have needle minders? Why do you have to have so many? I just don't understand it. This, on the back of this card, it says, accoutrement, accoutrement. I butcher my French. I don't even know French. I'm so sorry. People, I really apologize for butchering languages. Uh, the closest I ever got to French class was kissing my <laughs> French kissing my boyfriend before he went into French class. And I have a friend who still has the image burned in her mind and reminds me of it occasionally that there's not enough brain bleach in the world to get rid of that. Um, but anyway, it says accoutrement, a noun meaning something that is not necessary in itself, but adds to the convenience or performance of the main piece of equipment. 
This is why we have needle minders. It adds something to what we're doing. I just, for one, it's, it really is useful because I'm always, always dropping or losing my needle. I grab my needle minder and I just start running it over my clothes and I find my needle every single time. And then you just sit, if you're not, you know, fumble fingers like me and you set it on there, it hold your stuff and then it just makes my piece look pretty while I'm stitching it. it makes me happy uh, so for those who don't understand why well that's okay you don't have to understand but um, just know a lot of us take a lot of joy out of it and isn't that all that matters um, anyway as far as haul I think that's it I thought I had more but I put everything away yesterday and so now I'm a little worried I missed something. Y'all, I knew I, I was going to so forget it. something, and I did. And it's really important. Um, I received a gift in the mail, and uh, I just was blown away by this. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely loved it. It was so special to me. Um, Danielle Stitcherisa asked for my address, and, and um, so I gave it to her, and in the mail yesterday, I got this envelope, and I'm like, oh, you can see how excited I was. It totally tore it up. I said, oh, she sent me a card, but I'm like, it doesn't feel like a, a card. I Maybe she forgot the card. I don't know. And then I thought, oh, she sent me a skein of floss. Yay! So I opened this card up. She didn't just send me a skein of floss, you guys. She sent me a valentine. And look at that face. And it even comes with a little tattoo. I'm putting that on y'all. I really, really am. I, I love that face. Just so cute. Anyway, I, and along with the Valentine, she sent me the most perfect skein. DMC 666. Oh yeah. This is the perfect Valentine color. Perfect. I just love this red. Oh, this is just amazing. I felt like I opened up, you know, when you're in the fifth grade, fourth grade, and you all share valentines, and you open up your boxes, and you're all excited to see who sent you a valentine. And I was immediately transported back to those moments when I opened this up and saw my valentine card and my skein of DMC 666. I just brought back such wonderful memories, and to me, just such a special thought to get a valentine from from your friend I just Danielle thank you and Danielle has done so much for the stitching community I really appreciate her I appreciate her videos and how much she shares uh, right now she's doing a tutorial series on editing your videos together um, in Windows Movie Maker so helpful uh, to so many people to show you how to make something really nice if you if you really feel like I, I want to edit my videos differently she she tells you how to do that all um, she shares her tutorials on her finishes I just I just Danielle I just love you and I thank you so much for thinking of me and just making my day this I I couldn't be happier to have gotten a Valentine I just love the whole idea of that um, and I appreciate you and um, I cannot believe that I forgot this. I actually didn't remember until I turned around because I had it sitting right here. And I saw that I finished my video. I turned around and saw it and was like, oh, I can't believe I forgot the gift. But uh, yeah, love this. This DMC 666 just rocks my world. Thank you so much for um, sticking with me, for watching these videos. If you've subscribed, thank you for subscribing. Um, thank you for any comments you leave me. They really, really make my day. Um, and I try to get responded to all of them quickly, and sometimes I'm not so good about that. Um, but I eventually will. And if you came here from another channel, if you don't mind letting me know which channel um, gave me a shout-out, I would appreciate it so that I can make sure that I thank that person for taking time to watch my video and to to mention me to, to other floss tubers. Um, this has been just such a great experience for me and I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. You guys just really encourage me and um, I think that's wonderful. Um, I wish you all a wonderful week and a happy day and happy stitching. That's it. Bye.